నమస్కారం సద్గురు ఆ స్క్రిప్చర్స్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ ఆర్ టెంపుల్ స్కల్పర్స్ దిపిక్ మెనీ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ బీయింగ్స్ లైక్ గనాస్ అండ్ యక్షాస్ ఆర్ దీస్ ద సేమ్ బీయింగ్స్ దట్ ఆర్ విస్టింగ్ మనసు రోవర్ the only two cultures which have documented this to some extent are the, the indian culture has documented it hugely and the greek culture has done it to some extent about the nature when we say beings from another realm is only two cultures which is describing definite forms so here we have yakshas gandharvas kanas kinnaras apsaras kritikas and there's so many like this I think we have well recognized beings from other realms at least over 11 12 varieties of them The Greeks also have similar numbers of uh, probably if not similar maybe a little less but they also have recognized I think the only place uh, I have never entered this place where people tell me that the best library of this kind is in Adyar, in Chennai. The Theosophical Library is supposed to have immense collection of uh, occult books which deal with all these aspects. More than the spiritual process, it's the occult which explores these aspects because they are always looking how to use some kind of entity which has the necessary power intelligence and access to do things for them they're always looking how to enslave something to use it for their own benefit so the occult explores these things much more than the spiritual process but in the spiritual process i think gautama himself talks a lot about these things gautama the buddha buddha himself talks about a lot of different types of beings that he faced in his sadhana which invariably one is bound to face when they move into certain aspects particularly when we were in another place lots of things have happened but uh, but particularly when we were moving towards the consecration of the analinga these kind of beings like what are every day happening all kinds i'm not good at categorizing and naming them and saying this is this this is that but they're distinctly different that's for sure no question very distinctly different in their energy in their appearance in their everything it was all there but didn't pay attention but elsewhere i have paid attention to some of these things but it is wasteful in many ways because none of them at least whatever i have come across none of them will be of any spiritual significance to me so if i paid little attention to them in the moment i realized that's not it i took my attention off those things because they were never of any spiritual consequence they were only existential consequence if you want to explore the existence yes but if you want to know this uh, they are of no use because they just in a different form as ignorant as you are maybe with different kind of capabilities which will look incredible to you but i'm sure your capabilities look incredible to them otherwise they wouldn't be visiting isn't it as they look incredible to you you must be looking incredible to them that's why they're visiting these days i don't have this luxury 
At that time, there was no wall around the house and the morning always by like 5.45, 6 when the sun is rising, I always came and sat in the outside corridor. And the um, temple was not, still not there. I'm just building the temple in my mind. Every day I sit there and gazing in the direction where it should come up. I'm just… because I don't have the money, I don't have the material, I just don't know. Only what's in my mind. At that time, you know, like uh, these creatures just hung around for quite some time. They're like irregular shapes, but all like just like two dimensional, you know, like cardboards walking around, moving around, and making noises, and just hanging around right there all the time. Sometimes I could not ignore them because they were so noisy. And uh, it so happened sometimes that, uh, you know, like uh, other people in the house heard the voices and noises that I was talking to somebody. And they would come out and see that I was not talking to anybody. They cannot hear what, but they hear something. I never spoke, but they were making so many noises. You need to understand, noise means the kind of noise that we make, only we can make. When I say the kind of noise, well, the birds can make a different kind of noise, but both of us are making the same noise in terms of frequency, reasonably there, and that's why we can hear each other. There are other creatures here who are making other kinds of noises which you cannot hear. So usually these beings are making other kinds of noises, you cannot hear. But these were making noises that… like our kind of noises, that is somewhere in the frequency range that we can… we communicate in. Either they were specially making these noises for me or they also belong to the same category of noise making as we. I didn't explore all this because my thing was, my time was running out, my saints were slipping, so I was putting up the bricks. <clears throat> I sat there and putting up the bricks because my foundation was slipping away so rapidly. So, uh, if their sound making is of the same frequency as ours, it is also possible that their thought making could be reasonably about the same frequency as ours. Their body could be reasonably of the same kind of material, maybe not exactly, but same kind. Otherwise, your eyes wouldn't so easily capture it. Well, you could see it if you're in a certain way, other things also, but not that simply like… like anything else that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. So, are these yakshas, gandharvas, ganas? I don't think so, because they don't fit, fit into any of the descriptions that the traditions talk about. They describe gandharvas as the most beautiful human forms. Yakshas are slightly of a different kind but still reasonably human form. Dana is totally distorted. Distorted means unlike human forms. So most of the temples that you see are ganas. Why they're putting up ganas is because ganas have played an important role in the shaping of human consciousness because Shiva himself is a gana. And because he is a Ghana, Ghana has hung around him, he's his people. But he put on a form. He put on a form, a human form, to be effective with human beings. But his friends remained in the same old forms. 
His farm was powerful enough, impactful enough, they could manage their work without changing all of them. So Ghana farms are all over the place. Being human beings, we try to make it little like ourselves, slightly distorted, because we cannot imagine something which is totally unlike human. See, right now in front of the Bhairavi temple, two Ganas are sitting like this. Maybe they didn't look like that. But our human minds are such, a being means he must at least have a head. And then we can't, he just looks like a ball. We need two hands to make him look like a being in our mindset. If somebody has to look like a being, he must have hands, legs, everything, you know. Maybe they didn't have any of those things. Maybe what I saw was the real Ganas, that they didn't have any form like what we think of. But uh, over a period of time, artists… How can an artist write this and say, it's a being? If I show you an irregular shape of a paper and say this is a being, you won't buy it, isn't it? At least I must cut it. Reasonably human saying, say this is a being, little like that. You are clearly cut like this, we'll make you like this and say this is a being, so oh, okay. At least a head and a body and some limbs, something needed, isn't it? For human mind to perceive. So over a period of time, artists might have went on transforming the forms. The point where we made a Ganapati into a Gajapati. We made a Ghana into an elephant, which is a which is a serious big change, isn't it? Not a small change, very big change. Ghana Pati means the chief of the Ghanas, that's what it means. So it is not just he went and slaughtered somebody's head and put it. He told the Ghana, okay, I'll take your head and put it in the human body, at least you're halfway effective. Now I have made myself into complete human form. If I put a human body for you, only the head we are not able to create, you will be quite effective and he's effective, isn't it? We accepted him because he has a human body and a Ghana's head. If he sat whole Ghana, we kept him outside, we didn't make him, we didn't worship him. We kept the Ghanas outside the temple, but we took Ganapati into the temple. Why? Because he looks like us. So, he might have thought through all these things and done it. Maybe at least he needed one assistant who looked, like, who looked reasonably human. Isn't it so? Maybe they just came just like how we saw them in the Manasura world, just like that in bunches. You know, simply a certain kind. They knew in that form they cannot operate. So maybe they used the local earth to create themselves and they couldn't shape themselves properly. It went like this, like that. When among human beings, everybody didn't come with the same shape, isn't it? <laughs> so like that, they went in many shapes and they thought it's okay. As long as one man is looking acceptable, they thought it's okay. Maybe to go to a conference, he needed one more guy. So, he took off his head and put it on a human body to fulfill some immediate purpose, I'm saying.